For well, challenge 12 of the Reddit CAD challenges beginner series, we're told to create a nice egg. An egg similar to the ones created by the House of Fabergé. Here I'll be showcasing my workflow in using soft space to create an egg and some bits and pieces to add onto the surface of the egg to try and make it look nice. In addition to creating the model, we're also challenged further to render the egg to make it look nice. And in order to do that, I'll be creating three mesh files, one for the egg and the other two for the bits and pieces I'll be adding onto the egg. And doing that will make it easier for me to add different materials onto those parts when I come to rendering the whole model at the end. So let's get into it. Before I start sketching the egg in soft space, let's think about its general dimensions first. I've got an electronic caliper, so if I take the length of the egg first, it's roughly 58 millimeters, so let's, that, let's make that 60. The longest width of it, it's about 42 millimeters, so to the nearest 10, that'll be 40 millimeters. There are several artistic websites out there that explain how to, how to draw a two-dimensional egg, but this one in particular I found to be quite useful. It's a website by GeoGebra, I think that's how you pronounce it. Here they show how we can use three different arcs to create the general outline of an egg. We've got one arc at the top, which is red, two at the sides, and they're both green, and then one semicircle at the bottom. First, I'll select the circle tool and create a circle at the origin, and then I'll select the circle, constrain its diameter by clicking here, constrain distance, and I'll type in 40 millimeters. The diameter of the circle now represents the longest width of that egg. Now I need to select that circle and click G on the keyboard to convert it into a guide. And there's a few other guides I need to add now. Let's select the circle tool again, and let's click somewhere along this line and go outwards like this. I want the center of this circle to be horizontally aligned with this center. So I'll select them both and click here. I want the center of this circle to coincide with the circumference of this circle. So I'll select them both and click constraint point on line. I want this circle to intersect the circle at this point here. So to do that, I'll select the point tool and click somewhere on the circle here. Let's align these two points to be horizontal with each other. And now let's select this point and this circle and click this again, constrain point on line. And let's convert this circle into a guide by selecting it and clicking G on the keyboard. I repeat the process now on the other side. Now let's add the smaller circle at the top, select the circle tool again. I'll highlight the inner circle, click on it and drag out. I'll select this center circle and the origin and constrain them to be vertically aligned to each other. I want this circle to intersect the larger circle here at this point. And there is a way of doing that according to the guide. We need to use the line segments tool. Highlight this point down here, click and drag and just drop that end somewhere over here on that circle. Let's convert this line into a guide. I want uh, to constrain this point to be on this line, so I'll select them both and click here, constrain points on line. Now I can convert these contours into guides. I'll select the line first, click G on the keyboard and do the same thing for the circle. Let's repeat the same thing on the other side. I'm going to draw now a set of other points and it will become clearer why I've added these extra points onto the guide later in the video. So I'll select the Arc Segments tool and click somewhere on this line over here and drag out to this point. Now I want to constrain this point and this circle to be overlaid with each other. So I'll click on this button here, Constrain Points on Line. We can constrain that by selecting these two points, constraining them to be vertically aligned with one another. Now what I want to do is constrain the center of the arc to be overlaid on top of this point here. But if I do that, I have an error message saying redundant constraints. So let's undo that, Control and Z. There is a way around it by selecting that point and this point and making them vertically constrained to each other. Arc tool again. I want to constrain the center of this arc to be over this point down here. But if I select the two points and click Constraint Points on Points, I also get the same error message of redundant constraints. So let's undo that. And the way around it is to select the center of the arc and the origin and constrain them to be horizontally aligned to each other. This time I'll click on this point and on the Y axis down here, let's constrain this point to be overlaid on a circle by clicking here. 
And as you can see, I can move these points around. So let's constrain uh, the points on the circumference and the center to be vertically aligned with each other. And now I want this point to be constrained to be at the center. Let's, let's finish off the sketch now with a line going from the top of the egg down to the bottom. So I select the origin and this line and then click the button and there's our egg. All right, I'll go to File, Save As and I'll save this as a soft space file. Let's start by adding something onto the egg. What I'm going to do is in the Properties panel, click on Home, go to the radio button here. I'll click on a lathe in the list here and then I'll delete it. And then in the sketch, I'm going to delete this vertical line hold down shift and select the three arcs that are created for the outline of the egg. So go to edit and copy, edit again, click paste transformed. And in the properties panel, you can see that we can add some changes to the object before we paste it. I want to change the scale of the arcs. So I'll click change on the scale. I'm going to change it to 1.03 millimeters. Let's now complete the sketch line segments tool. So now I've got a vertical line here and let's do the same thing at the bottom here. The next thing I want to do is extrude that shape. So I'll click here and let's give it an extruded depth of two millimeters. Maybe that's a bit too much. Let's make it one. Okay. The next thing I'll do is to rotate this object such that we have a symmetry, a C3 symmetry. I'll select the origin and the normal line that's pointing up along the Y axis and then click this button here. Now you see that we have a C3 symmetry, but we have some rendering issues. And to get rid of that in the checkbox here in the properties panel, you click on the checkbox next to four snub surfaces to triangle mesh. Now I'm going to hide the guides in the model and hide the points. And I'll go to file, save as, and I'll call this egg outer structure. So that's one of the pieces we'll be adding onto the egg. In the diagram at the bottom of the Fabergé egg, we've got these what looks like golden blobs on the surface of the egg. They're not really blobs, they're intricate designs, but I'm going to try and approximate them as a as a sphere, which will be intersecting with the surface of the egg. So in solve space, I'm now going to click on file and new, and let's create a ball this time. So I'll select the line segments tool, click on the Y axis and release down here. That's already been constrained us to be vertically aligned. Arc segments tool now, and let's just close that contour like that. Let's constrain the center of the arc to be at the origin by selecting them both and clicking here. We need to constrain the length of the arc now. So let's select it and click here, constrain distance, and give it a diameter of four millimeters. If four millimeters is too much, I can always change that later. I'll select the center of the arc and this line and click here. So let's go to file, save as, I'll save it as a soft space file. Let's now go to file and new. And the next thing we'll do now is to bring these individual sketches together, orientate them with respect to each other to create our final product. If you haven't got the egg sketch open, you need to go to file and then find your egg file. First thing I'll do in the properties panel is select the lathe and click delete. And then I'll delete this vertical line as well. I'll also delete some of these other guides like this circle here. So I'm going to select the three arcs, click G on the keyboard and just convert them all into guides for me. Let's go to new group, link assemble, and let's select one of the ball file. And so I'll select the X axis normal line and the global coordinate X axis normal and click here. Constraint almost have the same orientation. And now I'll select the center of that sphere and overlay it at this point here. Create a C3 symmetry. So I'm going to rotate this ball 120 degrees three times around the center of this egg. So I'll select the center of the egg and the Y axis normal and click this button this time. And if I middle mouse click and rotate, you'll see that we've got a C3 symmetry where the angle between these balls is now 120 degrees. Okay, let's repeat the process now. Okay, I'll middle mouse button now and you can see better what I've done. I can now save this as a triangle mesh file by going to File, Export Triangle Mesh. I'm going to select the OBJ file format. I'm now going to import the other parts. I'm going to hide the guides there for a minute and the points. I want the center of this egg to be at the origin. But this time I'm going to constrain the local Y axis normal with that of the global Y axis normal to have the same orientation. And then I'll click on this button in the properties panel to show points, select the center 
and the origin, and then click here, constrain points on points. But notice that the structure looks hollow, and that's because in the properties panel, we again need to check on force NURB surfaces to triangle mesh. Now I can go to file, export triangle mesh, make sure that I've selected the OBJ file. By importing all those parts together, we can create what looks like an egg with those pieces on it. Definitely not as nice as a Fabergé egg. And to make this look better, I'm going to head into Unreal Engine. By creating a blank game in Unreal Engine, you end up with some of these assets. We have a table, some nice clouds in the background. What I'm going to do is place the egg on top of the table. And for that, first of all, I'm going to select this ornament that's on the table and get rid of it. In the contents drawer, I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this models. I'm going to click and drag the .obj files directly into the folder. And if you have this pop-up window, I'm just going to click import. Now I'll select the egg, click and drag it into the world and just drop it on the table. I'll select it. And then in the properties window over here, I'll make sure that its orientation is correct. Let's try 90 degrees first. Yeah, that was, that was right. And I'll just position it to be at the center of the table. So I'll select the OBJ file of the spheres, click and drag it into the world and just drop it at the table as well. So I'll select the model, go to the rotation part in the properties panel and click 90. I want the position now of this model to be the same as the egg. Change that to minus 180. And I think this has to be 120 and that has to be zero. And the last thing we need to put in now uh, is the egg scaffold model. And we'll do the same thing for this one. Change its rotation first and then I'll change its uh, position. Now I can start adding some materials onto the egg. I've created another folder for materials. And inside that folder, I'll right click and select material. I'll call this M underscore egg double click on it click and drag from the base color type in const select the three-dimensional vector double click on the color and i'll make it a blue color maybe a sky blue i'll leave the metallic as it is but for the roughness i'll click and drag another wire and type in const for a single value change the value to be 0 0.9 Click save. I can now drop that material directly onto the egg. Let's do the same thing now for uh, wall structures. So back in the content drawer, let's create another material. Right click, click on material. I'll call this one M underscore sphere. Double click on it. Same thing as before. Let's select the metallic node, type in const, select the single value constant, and, and I'll give this a metallic value of 0.95. You can see it's kind of rough, so we'll bring down the roughness value and I'll change this maybe something like 0.1. Mm, that's probably a bit too metallic. Let's try 0.2. Okay, maybe that'll do. So I'll click save here first. And as before, I'll click and drag that now onto one of the balls. Give it a few seconds. You can now see that we've got nice reflective material on, on the spheres. So I'll create a new material, double click on it. So if I make it yellow-ish, give it quite a high roughness as well, maybe 0.7. And now what I'll do is I'll save the material and in the content straw, I can now click and drag and drop that onto it. I think the material's probably a bit too dark, so let's make it lighter and whiter. Click save. And that's our nice egg. I think it looks nice. I don't know what you think about it. So things we learnt in this, the structure of an egg, then how to draw it in 2D. We then created the egg, the spheres, and the scaffold for the egg separately in order to create different materials for them in Unreal Engine. So I hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you in the next challenge. Mm -hmm.